All right, welcome to Countryside Baptist Church Second Service. If you, uh, huh? Oh. If you uh, haven't made your way inside from the foyer, go ahead and make your way this way, and let's get that stand up. We're going to get started this morning with a uh, song called "God of All My Days." It's a good one. Sing with us.
Isn't it great that we've got a God that's not just our God on our good days, not just God on our bad days, but he's God of all our days, amen? And no matter how our seasons change, he still stays the same, amen? amen. Welcome to Countryside Baptist Church. We're going to do another song, and uh, during this time, you can greet each other. If you came prepared with tithes or offerings, our box is in the back there. Uh, if you are low on caffeine, there's a coffee bar in the back down this hallway. Uh, feel free to visit that. Uh, they're doing a lot of upgrades and uh, decorating back there. Um, things look really great if you haven't seen that. All right. Read away. Yeah. 
Thank you. You may be seated for a moment. Hallelujah. Amen. We're getting ready to sing a couple of oldies, but goodies. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to let you stay seated for the first one. Uh huh. You're so good. All right. Let's roll it. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river in my soul. I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river in my soul. I've got love like an ocean, I've got love like an ocean, I've got love like an ocean in my soul. I've got love like an ocean, I've got love like an ocean, I've got love like an ocean in my soul. I've got joy like a fountain, I've got joy like a fountain, I've got joy like a fountain in my soul. I've got joy like a fountain, I've got joy like a fountain, I've got joy like a fountain in my soul. Amen. Thank you. Stand with us and join in singing now. Sunshine in my soul today. Amen. Ah, there's always hope in the Lord's sunshine. Amen. There is sunshine in my soul today. More glorious and bright than glows in any earthly sky. is my light. Oh, the sunshine, blessed sunshine, when the peaceful, happy moments roll. When Jesus shows his smiling face, there is sunshine in my soul. There is music in my soul today. The peaceful, happy moments roll When Jesus shows his smiling face There is sunshine in my soul There is gladness in my soul today And hope and praise and love For blessings which he gives me now Sunshine when the peaceful happy moments roll. When Jesus shows his smiling face, there is sunshine in my soul. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Amen. Good to be back with you again. How many of you enjoyed Dr. Jerry Nash last week? 
that was short notice. We texted him about two that morning, and and uh, he immediately responded back, which is unusual for anybody to actually respond back at two in the morning. But uh, I had spoken to him earlier in the day, and I knew that he was available. So, and plus, he's my my normal stand-in, and and uh, if that fa fails through, I usually will recruit Brother Steve Carlson sitting right there. He's he's one of my stand-ins too, and. Uh, but uh, Brother Jerry was available, so I'm thankful that he was able to, to come. Uh, I don't, they still don't know exactly what happened to me, but they're, they're running a battery of all, I got a heart monitor on for two weeks right now. I'm, I don't, it doesn't stick to me real good. I sweat a little bit, you know? <laughs> So I had to go back in there and adjust my little thing, my little sticky thing. But uh, they, don't, they don't know. My heart has always been fairly strong, but my family has some history of stuff. So they're trying to check that out. And they did find out through the MRI that I do have a brain. So anyway, I, I learned that. But, so I'm, but uh, I'm thankful to, to be able to stand before you and uh, proclaim the Word of God to you again. Because I tell you what, I love the Lord. I love to uh, share His Word. And uh, we're a Bible-believing church. How many of y'all know that? We're a Bible-believing, Bible-preaching church. In fact, let's, uh, let's pause right now and pray for... Our brother out in California because uh, John MacArthur, they're attacking him and saying he can't even have church. So we want to pray for him and pray for others that are across our nation that are being attacked. Uh, one of our members, Miss uh, Helen Ambergy, is, uh, we heard just a while ago that she's been taken to the hospital and uh, this second time in a month she's been there. She can't, she has real bad asthma so she can't, you know, do, do well when any sort of breathing difficulty. So let's, let's just pause and, and pray and, and uh, pray for MacArthur and our other brothers that are out there fighting this battle for freedom, First Amendment freedom in America. Can you believe that in America? And uh, it's, it's uh, on the horizon. Uh, Jesus predicted it long ago that he said, you will suffer persecution if you live godly. And so it's finally reached our shores. So let's pray it doesn't come here, but it, it more, more than likely will. So let's go to prayer. Lord Jesus, I pray right now for, number one, for uh, Brother MacArthur, Lord, out there in California, that he'll, you'll give him a backbone of steel, and Lord, that he'll stand against the evil forces that are coming against your church. They always have come against your church, Lord, ever since day one when you started it. But Lord, you, you tell us this, the, the, the kingdom of God is going to overtake the whole world. It's going to grow like a humongous tree, and it's going to invade every part of this earth. So... Lord, as, as we attack the gates of hell once again with your gospel and with your word, Lord, we come against the evil forces in the, the shed blood of the Lord Jesus and in your name of your son, Jesus, Lord, we come against it. And we, we rebuke the enemy out there and on, in your territory here. Lord, we, we come against it. And we stand with Brother MacArthur and other Christians that are, are paying the ultimate price right now across our world. Lord, we also pray for Miss Helen. Hamburg, that you'll touch her lungs and help her to, to survive whatever's going on right now in, in her life. And also, Brother Bob, Lord, he's with us today. Continue to heal his lungs and help him get stronger. And thank you, Lord, for letting me get better and be able to come once again and share your word. So be with us today. And, Lord, I pray that you'll fill this place with your Holy Spirit. You'll fill us with your Holy Spirit. And you'll give me freedom to, to, to break the bread of your word today. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to speak for the next few minutes on finding your best life here and now. And of course, our number one goal is to help you have eternal life. We don't want you to, when you die, we don't want you to go to hell, okay? And, and God doesn't want you to go to hell. See, the, the common misconception out there is that God is just a mean old God that wants to cast people into hell. And he says in the Word, he says, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked. He, he said, I would rather you believe and live than to go to hell. So our purpose and our our uh, prerogative and our goal and our mission is to help people find Jesus and keep them out of that awful place called hell. Once that's settled, we want you to have a best, the best life you possibly can right here and right now. And uh, it's, this is not prosperity theology like some preach, but, but it's built upon the principles of God's Word. And today we're going to be looking at building your marriage on the rock. When I say that, what, what are you thinking of when I say building it on the rock? What, 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 it, what comes to your mind? Jesus. Jesus, isn't it? Now, most of you remember the old hymn. 
You know, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. The solid rock, oh Christ, the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. And as we think about that today, we think about what are you building your life upon? Our church is, we have a, a, a focus and a mission here to help people find, number one, a strong faith in our Lord Jesus Christ because He is a solid rock. When everything else falls apart, Jesus is still there, strong as ever. And he, the one that spoke our universe into existence, that's who we're talking about. And when you have a strong faith in Him and you begin to establish a family and you base your family upon that strong faith, you have a, two partners that are in love with Christ and they, they have a strong faith and you get together, then you have a stable family. And that results in a secure future. So you think about what, what is Countryside Baptist Church all about? Three words. Family, faith, and future. Say that with me one time. What are we about? Remember that. If you want to tell somebody about our church, that's what you want to tell them. Say we're all about family. We're all about you know faith, family, and future. We want you to have a strong faith in God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We want you to have a stable family, and we want you, and you will that will result in a secure future. Uh, I've been married to that same lady over there for a pretty good while now. We got married. Uh, you can count it up yourself. 1971, and uh, she's still to me as beautiful as she was that day that I, she and I said I do. At the old South Side, we actually were married in the old South Side building down on Southwest Second Terrace. Long gone now, but the the vows we made, we made to our to one another, to God, the God of heaven, in front of witnesses, and we established a marriage based upon our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, we haven't had a perfect marriage. I mean, we've had times where we we've had problems. We have we've had times where we've had all sorts of storms come in our life. I mean, we've had health issues. We've had emotional issues. We've had family problem issues. We've had all those issues. But I know this, our faith was strong in the Lord Jesus Christ. In fact, we didn't know you could miss church, actually. We'd grown up in church. Die. <laughs> My daddy's a preacher, you know, and, he taught, and her parents taught her. We didn't know you, you, you could miss church. We didn't know you, you, you could not tithe. <laughs> we were raised to tithe, you know. So we, that's how we based our marriage on what we had learned about Jesus. And we learned about the Bible. And we learned how a Christian is supposed to act and, and behave. And we just... Copied suit, followed suit of what our parents had taught us. And you know what? It gave us, a, our, that strong faith gave us a stable family. You know, we celebrate not, from 1971. That's a long time, isn't it? We married the same person. <laughs> we, frequently, this is weird. Frequently, we, we see people that we graduated with. 1970 at Gainesville High School, and she graduated in 71. And, and they say, well, are, who are you married to now? What kind of question is that? Well, that's a normal question for the world, isn't it? And, they, and I say, Vonnie. And they go, you're still married to Vonnie? I go, yeah. We're, we're like the oddball out now, you know, because <laughs> most people just don't stay married anymore. But thank God we had a strong faith in the Lord Jesus Christ that kept us together. And we, it gave us a stable family. And, and now we have a secure future. We know where we're going when we die. But we also have a whole lot of fun while we're here, okay? Man, I tell you what, there's nothing like grand youngins. I'm telling, I've got some now. We have eight. And they are the greatest thing next to sliced bread. That's it, man. I'm telling you. <laughs> wow. I, I thought, you know, I really love my children with all my heart. I thought there's nothing on earth that could, I could love even more. I think I love my grandkids more. <laughs> That's terrible to say you love them more than your kids. But it's true. You, you, you get a double portion of love for those grandbabies when they come along. But you, you see... Why do we have that? Well, we have that because of what we based our life upon. We based it upon a strong faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Gave us a stable family. Now we have a secure future. No matter what happens in the, in the coming days, we know where we're headed when we, when we die. And, and our children know Christ, so I know where they're headed when they die. And my grandchildren know Christ. I know where they're headed when they die. You see, we've got a secure future. No matter what the enemy might throw at us or cast at us, we're fine. And we want you to have that same kind of stable Rock solid life. Take your Bibles and go to Matthew 7 this morning. Matthew 7. And I'm going to begin reading in verse 21. Matthew 7, verse 21. 
Jesus said, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say unto me in that day, Whoops, I blacked it out a little minute. There we go. I always hit my fat thumb, hits the wrong button up here. So, Many will say unto me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name have done many wonderful works? There he did it again. Then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye, work, ye that work iniquity. Now notice, notice what he said there, verse 21. Read it to me. Not what? Louder. See, there's a lot of people that have grown up in church, or a lot of people that attend church, and they, they are Sunday-type Christians, Sunday morning Christians, okay? They say they're Christians, and they, yeah, they've said the sinner's prayer at some point, you know, yeah, 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 that's Jesus, blah, 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 blah. But it really has not really changed their life. They don't follow Christ. They don't live, what Jesus, or live like Jesus told them, or even try. They show up on Sunday, they put their money in the pot, and they go home and think they've done their duty. But he says what? Not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that what? Doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. See, it's one thing to be a professor. It's another thing to be a possessor, okay? A whole lot of people think they have it and they don't. Jesus said there's a lot, a lot of people, many will say that, and he said, Lord, we've, we've done all this stuff. We've cast out demons in your name and we've prophesied and done this and done that. We've done many wonderful works. And he said, I'll profess to you, I'll never knew you. Depart from me, that work iniquity. You mean people can actually do stuff in the name of Jesus and, and it's wrong and it's, and it's considered evil? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There are a lot of people that are out there today saying they're Christians and doing all sorts of this stuff. They say they're doing this stuff in Jesus' name. and I'm going to cast the demon out of this town. and all. Better be careful. <laughs> you better be careful. You better make sure you're tied to the real Jesus. There's a lot of fake Jesuses out there. Paul said, I, I, I marvel that you're so soon removed from the gospel and you believed another gospel. He said, but it's not really another gospel. It's a false gospel, yet you've believed it. Remember, he talked to the Ephesians and said, you've, you believe something that's not even the real deal. Even though it sounds real, and they use the name of Jesus, Jesus said, I'll profess to him, I never knew you. So, number one, before we go to the next verse, make sure you're tied to the real Jesus. Make sure your faith is in the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, okay? Make sure you're trusting Him alone for your eternal destiny. Because you don't want to be there and God to say, I never knew you. How many of you don't want to hear that? I don't want to hear that. And I'm not going to hear that because I know in whom I believed. Now, verse 24. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a, say it loud, a what? A rock. The rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew, beat upon that house and it fell not for it was founded upon a rock. Everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell and great was the fall of it. It came to pass when Jesus had ended these sayings the people were astonished at his doctrine. Jesus taught doctrine. The doctrine of the Lord Jesus Christ, who He is and what He did. And Listen, the doctrine of Christ is critical. You better make sure you believe in the real Christ and not some fake Jesus. For He taught them as having authority and not as the scribes. See, there's a lot of religious people out there today. There's a lot of people using the name of Jesus. And I really believe a lot of it is just using the name of Jesus in vain. You remember the, the uh, seven sons of Siva in the book of Acts? When they went out and trying to cast demons out of those people, remember they saw the apostles doing it, and they went and tried to do it. They said, in the name of what Paul and them are talking about, the apostles, we command you to come out of that person. In the name of Jesus. And the demons jumped on and beat them up, stripped them naked, and sent them home hurting and bleeding. So they couldn't do it. But even though they used the name of Jesus, they were powerless because 
They didn't know the real Jesus. And you don't need to be in that category. You want to be, your faith in the real Jesus, the, the doctrine of who Jesus is and what he did, and the fact that we believe that he is the one that gives us our salvation. We can't earn our salvation by doing good works. Jesus has already earned 100% of our salvation. You know, for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourself. It is the gift of God, not of works lest any man should boast. So it's believing in what he did for us on the cross, not what we could do for him here on the earth. So I'm going to give you a few pictures. How many of you have ever been over to Flagler or St. Augustine after a hurricane? Anybody ever been over there? We went over, uh, we, we like to go to Palm Coast. And it's below marine land, and, and it's inland about a mile, half a mile. When you come down past marine land, and the road veers inland a little bit, and it's real shady and cool there. It's not as hot as it is on the beach. And where we stay down there is about probably, probably five-tenths, almost seven-tenths of a mile off the beach. It's on A1A where it jogs inland. Cool and shady. And a place called Hammock, Florida. We actually live Gulf Hammock, Florida that way, but we vacation in Hammock, Florida on that side. And the reason we do that, it's just like old Florida used to be, and, it, and it's a lot of fun. But we went down there after the hurricane a couple years ago, and that whole section right below Marine Land was totally brown. The leaves were gone. The trees were dead. So much salt water intrusion. Most of those homes were ruined. Then you got down a little further, and it was green and pretty again. But as I was thinking about that and thinking about this scripture Jesus said about the sinking sand, I thought about houses that are built there. Some people are foolish the way they build their homes, aren't they? Now, I'm going to give you some pictures. I want you to tell me if it was a foolish place to build or a wise place, okay? Foolish. foolish. In fact, right through there, A1A was, you know, right there near the beach by uh, between Marine Land and Matanzas. The whole road was gone there on the, the coastal road. You couldn't, I mean, they blocked it off and a lot of the homes were just like that one. But that was foolish to build your house there, wasn't it? What about this guy? Wise? Yeah, why? Rock. He's not going anywhere. That waves, those waves aren't going to wash him away. What about this one? Foolish. Stupid. Now look, look at he's got all kind of concrete and piers under there, but it's not enough. Why? It's called sinking sand, isn't it? And, and listen, we got a hurricane brewing right now down by Naples coming up the coast, and y'all pray it keeps going west because I don't want it to come through Gulf Family. But uh, you know what? We're, we're okay if it does. We have our generator and all that good stuff. But still, we're far enough inland that it won't do this to us, thank God. But this guy was not real wise. And to rebuild there, you think that would be wise or foolish? It'd be foolish, wouldn't it? What about this? Wise. Now, I don't know if I'd want to live that high. I'd have to have oxygen, <laughs> you know. Probably, that's probably 5,000, 6,000 or higher up there somewhere in the Alps, you know. Uh, but that, see, that's been there a long time. It's not going anywhere. Why? Built on a rock. What about this one? <laughs> Foolish or wise? Why? Why is, it, why is it foolish? Why are people so stupid? Why do they build their lives on sinking sand? Well, just like this person built their house on this sinking. What about this one? Wise or foolish? Wise. Some of those, some of those castles over there, and this is somewhere over in the Europe, some of those things are hundreds and hundreds of years old. In fact, our family tr uh, traces back to Scotland. We're Scottish. Never been there, but I want to go one day. But our family was... The, the Sheriff Marshal of the island somewhere there in, in Scotland. And, and most of our ancestors were born in Donatar Castle. Ooh. Look it up on Google. You can Google it. It was made in the 1400s and it's still there. Donatar Castle of all places, you know. Why? why? Because it's built upon a rock like this one. Uh, what about this one? Wise or foolish? You know, it never ceases to amaze me. People are just so foolish. And they keep building on sand and stuff. Hey, and especially in other countries. They don't have the, the building codes that we have here. That Nowadays, we start building, you know, up on pilasters and uh, on concrete pilasters and also hurricane-shaped 
roofs and that sort of that, that sort of thing. We, you know, we're doing a lot better than we used to. Uh, but would you say wise or foolish? Okay. What about this one? Wise or foolish? Wise. Now, I'm not saying he won't get wet once in a while, <laughs> but I, I promise you that the house will still be there. Back in uh, the 80s, mom and dad had a place down in Crystal River right on the water. And if you remember the no-name storm that came in in the night, y'all remember that? They woke up with three foot of water inside their house. But, you know, it didn't destroy the house because the house was a block house. It destroyed the, the uh, sheetrock up about three and a half feet. So they had to replace that lower end and dry the house out and do the carpet. But the house is still there. Why? It was built on a strong foundation and it had block walls. And it didn't tear it up other than the, the flood. This house probably would, would be like that at times with high water. But I know this. I've lived a long time now and I've counseled hundreds and hundreds of couples. And I know this for sure. The strongest lives are built upon Jesus, the solid rock. I have seen it a time and time again. Uh, what you build your life upon is of utmost importance. Sink in sand. Jesus, Jesus used that illustration. You know, we live in a, in a, a part of Florida that's hurricane, you know, hurricane central almost. We have so many that come through here at different times. See, what you build your life upon is utmost important, just like what you build your home upon. And uh, lives built on sinking sand will ultimately fail. When people build their lives on something other than Jesus and a faith in Jesus, their life's going to fail. You know, their, their marriages will fail. Their homes will fail. You know, it's just not going to... Now, once in a while you see people that aren't saved and they, they end up living the whole life married to the same person and they have a, have a good life. But it's not because that's the norm. <laughs> it's just that they're, they're abnormal. They, they follow the, the rules God put in place and, it, and God blessed them for... Even though they don't even know Him possibly, they still are benefiting from what God set in place long ago. But the strongest marriages are those built upon Jesus, the solid rock. I can promise you this. There, I've seen time and time again, I have counseled many, many, many couples. And, and I've seen the ones that came for help, that knew Jesus and were willing to, to let Jesus have first place in their life. Those marriages were saved. Now the ones that weren't, you might have one partner that wanted to and the other one that didn't. They didn't survive. A whole lot of them are no longer in existence. And it, it's not because you got... The person in the in the marriage is bad. It's because you have one or two that and you have. Sometimes you have a partner who loves the Lord, but you have the other partner who doesn't. You know, and what happens? It's like being built on shifting sand, and it, and you you end up losing that particular marriage. You see, what you build your marriage upon is of utmost importance. Utmost importance. We didn't have a whole lot of this kind of teaching when I was dating. I'll be honest with you. My dad was a good pastor, but there was just not a lot of stuff about the family back then. And I think that what happened in the next couple of generations as we saw the deterioration happening, more and more pastors and, and teachers began to really teach on the family. And, and we were thankful that we were able to glean from that when we went off to college. We, we were able to senator some great men, great teachers that taught us about family and home and, and how that you're supposed to do. And, and uh, it, it wasn't hit or miss. It was actually, here's how you do it, and here's how you follow the Scriptures, and here's how you put it into your marriage. And it, well, I tell you what, that really helped us a lot. Going back to the beginning, you know, traditional marriage was designed by God. It wasn't some invention that man came up with, it was just an idea, a, socially, uh, a social thing that they came up with over millions of years. That's what the, the evolution will tell you. Millions of years, and... And over social contracts were developed and da-da-da-da. That's how we end up with marriage. Nah. <laughs> no. Traditional marriage was designed by God. It's something God did. And, and really, when you want to have the best life here now, you go back and find what the prototype was. Find out what the, the God that created everything, what did He set it up as to begin with? It's the prototype. The prototype of anything, usually when they build it, they build it perfect, don't they, Lord? like an airplane, whatever. They build a prototype that is perfect in every detail. Then they design all the others and build all the others based upon the prototype. And by the same way or same token, we base our marriage on what God said a long time ago. 
He set it up. We didn't design it. We, it wasn't my daddy's and my mama's idea. It wasn't their parents' idea. It wasn't their parents' parents' idea. <laughs> Listen, traditional marriage was God's idea. He started it a long time ago. I'm going to take you back to the book of Genesis. When you want to find out how to do it better and have a better life here, you always go back to find out how God did it, right? How many think that's a good idea? All right, we're going to do that. We're going to go to Genesis chapter 2. You've been here before if you've sat under my teaching. But we have to go back there periodically to remind people and to reteach people and to help people that may be struggling now how to fix what's wrong because so many times we don't know how to fix what's wrong. And we don't know why we're having the issues we're having. Well, let's go back to the prototype and see. Genesis 2.18 Then the Lord God said, It is not good for man to be alone. I will make a helper who is just right for him. That's, she reached over and touched her husband and said, That's so cute. I loved it. How long y'all been married? 57 years. She reached over and patted her husband's hand like, Honey, this is... And what she was saying was, I was the answer to your prayer. <laughs> that was awesome. And y'all were, girls. If you're, if you're blessed enough to have a wife, you're just blessed, guys. You need to hold on to that woman because okay? God's good. And, and see, all, in Genesis 2, everything, and all through there, and it was good, and it was good, and it was good. Everything he built was good. Here's the only thing that wasn't good in that whole section of Scripture. It's not good for what? For man to be alone. I'll make a helper who is just right for him. They sure come in handy when they help you find stuff you lost, don't they? <laughs> or remember stuff you should have remembered. There's a whole lot of other benefits too that, that God's designed. Look at verse 19. So the Lord God formed from the ground all the wild animals and all the birds of the sky. He brought them to the man, Adam, to see what he would call them. And the man chose a name for each one. Can you see the... God bringing the animals by, pairs of animals coming by Adam and he's naming you. That was going to be a giraffe and that one's going to be an aardvark and that one's going to be an anteater and that one's going to be an elephant. You know, he named all the animals and, he's, and they're going by and they're nuzzling, you know, and, and Adam's thinking, hmm, I don't want nobody to nuzzle. <laughs> you know, and God said, it's not good for man to be alone. It says, he gave names to all the livestock and all the birds of the sky and all the wild animals, but still... There was no helper just right for him. So, so the Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep. While the man slept, the Lord God took out one of the man's ribs and closed up the opening. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib and he brought her to the man. Now isn't it interesting that God didn't take a foot bone and make a woman out of a foot bone because we're not supposed to walk on them. And he didn't take one out of the head, you know, Make a bone out of your head somewhere because it's, you know, we're not to rule over them like that and they're not to rule over us like that. But he took the part next to the heart <laughs> out of the man and he made her a woman out of that, that part of the ramp. In fact, it's uh, the first instance of anesthesia in history. This is the first instance of surgery in history. It's the first instance of cloning in history. But I'm sure glad God took that, the genetics and changed them a little bit, aren't you? I'm glad he didn't make us a man to be with us. I like you guys, but I don't want to sleep in the same bed with you, I promise you. God made a woman. Verse 23, at last the man exclaimed, this, is, this one is bone from my bone and flesh from my flesh. She, she, she shall be called woman because she was taken from man. This explains why a man leaves his father and mother and Going to his wife, and the two are one. Now the man and his wife were both naked, but they felt no shame. God's plan, the prototype, is right there. That's how he started it all. He performed the first wedding in history between these, this couple, Adam and Eve. And it, it wasn't two men. It was a man and a woman. Traditional marriage is always between a man and a woman. And no matter what the world says, and no matter what the sociologists say, no matter what the, the people that are trying to, to change all that over today and make anything a marriage, listen, a marriage is between a man and a woman and, and the God of heaven. See, traditional marriage is still ordained and sanctioned by God. The other kinds aren't. 
There's only one kind of marriage that's sanctioned by God between a man and a woman. And the other type, they're not sanctioned by God. Don't even expect God to bless those because He will not. Another thing about marriage, it was designed for our ultimate well-being. God said it wasn't good for man to be alone. You know, and there's so many fringe benefits that come along with marriage. And God, God gave it on purpose. If you Google this, you, I'm telling you, they've done so much study on how the well-being for married people, how, how it helps your well-being. First thing, married couples live longer. I'm thankful to have, when I had my little episode the other night, I had a beautiful wife that figured out what was wrong and got me up and got me feeling better, you know. What if I had not had help that night? I might have, I might have gone on to heaven early. I don't know, you know. But I had someone to help me. See, married couples live longer. Married couples have better health. We're able to look out for one another. How many of you uh, girls or guys have to be reminded to take your own medicine? None of you are like that. <laughs> Terry raises his hand. You ever have to remind him, Miss White? <laughs> uh, married couples have better income. Two are better than one, the scripture said. Uh, married couples have less ulcers. They don't worry as much as uh, uh, ones that aren't married. Married couples have less insomnia, unless your partner snores a lot. Then you have to get a muzzle on them. Is that why you got a muzzle on? <laughs> married couples are le less likely to commit suicide. These are just facts that are out there. These are readily available. Plus, there's a whole lot of other good reasons and blessings for marriage. And see, God ordained marriage to make strong societies. And when, as long as the society has strong marriages, you have, you have a stable society. Uh, marriage is important because families are important. That's the, the building block of society. All society is the family. God ordained that. He put it in place. Uh, families are important because they're the building blocks of our society. You've noticed what has happened in recent years as the family has crumbled. What's, what's happened to the kids? And what's happened, what kind of adults do they become? Well, they become the kind of adults that are burning down our, our, our cities now. And it happens because the family's messed up. See, when the family collapses, so does society. Therefore, traditional marriage should be encouraged and supported by the government. Not talking about financially support, but morally supporting marriage. We should be pushing traditional marriage. Now, we always have until the last 20 years or so. Our government has pushed marriage and, and encouraged marriage until recent years. Uh, society should support traditional marriage and individuals, we ought to do it in every possible way. And we ought to be a trumpet for traditional marriage. Isn't it terrible that at, at a certain point in our history, they started taxing, they call it the marriage penalty in our taxes. Yeah, really, in our taxes, I think they've overturned that a little bit now, but for a long time, you were penalized and had to pay more taxes if you were married. If you, were, if you weren't, if you were shacking up or not married, you didn't have to pay as much taxes as the marriage. See, that is not a government support marriage. That's a government fighting against traditional marriage. Thank God that is turning around, hopefully. But as we conclude today, know this. Why not find the best life right here and now by building your life upon, your marriage upon the rock? Starts with building your life upon the rock. Starts with an individual that says, I am going to live for Christ, period. Then you find the other person that believes the same thing and you, when you get married, then you build your marriage upon that rock. And it goes back to what we're trying to do at Countryside. What are the three words that we're trying to do? When you tell people about our church, this is what you want to tell them, okay? This is how you promote what we do here. You say, what do you all do at Countryside? Well, we're trying to help people have a strong faith, you know, and, and if you don't have that faith, we can help you. We can help you find Jesus as your Lord and Savior. In fact, uh, James Lofton told me this week, he told me that he had met a guy, he was out sh tractor shopping over in Chiefland. <laughs> and he met a guy and come to find out the guy didn't know the solid rock, Jesus. And he led that person to Christ. And the, the guy gave him a big old hug. He said, I'm not supposed to do this. But I'm going to give you a hug. Thank you for coming over here. Didn't buy a tractor, but he, but he found a soul. And he found a person in Chiefland that is now going to go to heaven one day because a believer from this church cared enough about him to tell him 
about how to have a strong faith. And now that person does. You see, what are we about? We're about helping people find Jesus, telling them about our Lord and Jesus, and helping them get established on that solid rock. And then helping them have, if they get married, have a stable family. Now, if you're single and you don't want to be married, that's okay. We need help. And that means, Paul says, you, when you're single, you can serve the Lord with more vigor <laughs> and more time. Because once you're married, you have a lot of other responsibilities to take care of your family. But when you're not married, you can have more time to serve the Lord. So let us know if you want to be put to work. We'll find you something to do. We've got a lot of, lot of stuff to do at Countryside, and we could use some help. And if you're single, you can sure help us even more because you have more time. But if you want to find a mate, I know this. God said, he said, you know what God's phone number is? Anybody know what his phone number is? You know what, Bob? Who knows his phone number? What does it say? That's God's phone number, Jeremiah 33.3. 3. Write it down. You call unto me and I'll show you great and mighty things that you don't know about. You say, I don't know who, I don't even have a mate. I don't know who do you, I don't know how to find a mate. I don't, I don't, can't, there's not any good people out there anymore. Yeah, there is. God's got somebody out there for you. You just got to get in touch, call God and talk to him. If you want one, talk to him. And when you find them, let us help you build that stable family, okay? We'll show you from the word of God how to have a strong family relationship. And then when we do that, then we'll have secure future together. Our church will be secure, have a secure future. Individually, we'll be secure. Your family will be secure. In fact, if you know Jesus, we are secure, aren't we? You know, he, he says, these things have been written that you may know that you have eternal life. So it all begins with a relationship with our Heavenly Father through His Son, the Lord Jesus. And that's what we do at Countryside, and that's what we want to help you do. So today as we close, I'm going to close in prayer. If you... If God has spoken to you and you need to, to talk further about this and you'd like to, to meet Jesus for the first time, we can help you. We can show you how. Hang, stay behind for a few minutes and we'd love to talk to you. If you need prayer, if you have something that you'd like to pray about, hang, hang around. Come up to this table where Lloyd is and just sit there. And Some of our prayer partners, you'd be noticing who goes there. And if they stay there, that means they need prayer. So you come help, them, help me pray with them. And also, uh, Pastor Gene has a free book. And the foyer for every, he wants every family to have one, one, per, one copy per family. They're out there on the bench on the right as you go out. That he's asked that you take part in that. So let's close in prayer. And we won't have a song for invitation. This will be a stay behind type invitation. But remember to continue to pray all day for uh, MacArthur out west, but also for Miss Amberge. Also for Bob right there. Raise your hand, Bob. If you don't know Bob Thomas, continue to pray for him. And thank you once again for praying for your old pastor. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for your word, Lord, and we pray that, that we will all build our house upon the solid rock. And Lord, not on sinking sand, but on the solid rock. Help us stand on, on the belief in you, Lord, and base our life upon that. And I know if we do that, Lord, even when the storms come, the hurricanes blow and the wind, the floods come, rains descend, won't matter. We'll still be strong when it's all said and done because we're based upon you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen.